last year, as the pandemic really gripped hold, many would-be home sellers decided not to put their home on the market, which is completely understandable under the circumstances. Well, as the vaccine starts to get more widely distributed and talk that we're going to see things return to normal over the next few months or the hope that we will, there's starting to be talk and rumblings within the real estate industry that many of these sellers, and you might be one of them, might be coming back, that might actually move forward with their plans to sell this year. Hi, this is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team at eXp Realty. And if you're one of those sellers, I wanted to give you three tips or three things that you should consider if you are planning on listing your home for sale this coming year or this year that we're in now. All right, number one has to do with pricing. Price your home right. One of the misconceptions with inventory being so low and buyer demand being so high is that as a seller, you can list your home for whatever you want. And that is honestly just not the case. Um, buyers are unwilling to just go ahead and pay anything. Yes, many of them have to get into a home, but they're not willing to buy a home at just any price. You need to take that into consideration when you're pricing your home. That doesn't mean that you won't get a premium for a home, but it doesn't mean that you can just price it at anything and someone's going to pay for it. Unless you have an all cash buyer that's willing to pay you anything, if the buyer that you do get is obtaining financing, that home is still going to need to be appraised and it's still going to have to come in at appraisal. And the appraiser is going to be looking at the most recent comparable sales in your immediate area, along with market trends to determine whether or not your home is worth what you think it is. Um, in many cases, it's not. In some cases, it's worth more. So give you a couple of examples. I had someone recently that thought their home was worth about 525. I told them that I thought their home was worth closer to 575. Contract price ended up being 600, okay? So the market did push the price up some, but I also have comps to justify the sales price with some appreciation since the last one sold a couple of months ago. So we'll see where that one comes out. On the flip side, uh, you know, a, a realtor friend that I work with, he was meeting with some people and said, market value for your home under current conditions are worth about 375. They thought 500. How do you come up with the additional 125,000? It's just not reasonable. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's really important to talk to somebody and get the most relevant uh, data available for your specific neighborhood when making that pricing decision. All right, number two, keep your emotions in check. That one gets very, very hard to do. And one of the reasons is that homeowners nowadays is stay, are staying in their homes longer than they have. It's up to an average of about 10 years that most people are staying in a home before selling. Obviously, situations can dictate that some people sell sooner and others will stay in their home longer, but 10 years is the average that we're seeing right now. When you have somebody that's been in a home 10 years, you get attached to it. Your kids grew up there. There's a lot of memories that were made there. And as a result of that, there's a lot of emotion attached to it that goes along with those memories. And you gotta keep in mind that emotion won't sell the house, right? So you're going to have to get somewhat detached Look at the information that your agent is providing you on what's going on. Trust their opinion as a neutral third party. Doesn't mean they don't have your best interests in mind. They absolutely should have, but they're going to take the emotion out of it and help you navigate through the situation that we're dealing with in the current market in order to get you the absolute highest dollar value possible in the shortest amount of time. And number three, you still have to stage your home properly. Now, I'm not saying that you have to move everything out and have truckloads of model quality furniture brought in. That's not what I'm saying at all. But you still need to set, <clears throat> excuse me, set your home up to sell, right? So if you've got carpets that need cleaning, you're going to have to get them cleaned. If there's minor repairs that need to be made, you should go ahead and make those. Okay, if there's walls that need repainting, 
repaint them, right? If you've got all kinds of family photos uh, decorated across desks or on walls, take those down. A buyer still wants to be able to picture themselves in the home going forward rather than being inundated with your memories everywhere they look. So your home still has to be set up correctly. And in many cases, it does mean decluttering. But go ahead and get some moving boxes. Feel free to fill the garage with those. I mean, after all, you're going to be moving anyway. So get a head start on that. But just because we're in the market that we're in and sellers definitely have the upper hand right now doesn't mean that you still don't have to set yourself up for success. So hopefully these three tips help you. Um, I'm finding that the clients we're working with, it, they're being very successful in what they want to do just by following these simple guidelines. And if you've got questions about your particular home or your situation or what might happen in the market, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to uh, answer those questions and maybe even help you put a plan together to understand if this is the right time for you to sell your home. Until next week.